Okay, video lesson 1.4, uh, I'm sorry, 1.7, solving right triangles. This is going to use everything that we've learned up until this point, okay? Um, if you need to go back and watch the video lesson on the calculator use, um, if you didn't quite master that, I would encourage you to re-watch the video or to come into tutoring because we're going to use a lot of that in this lesson and I'm not going to review that on every example. Okay. So on each of these, I'm asking you to solve the triangle, which is to find everything that's not already given, okay? So let's start with number one by redrawing the triangle. Okay, and I'm redrawing the triangle that's listed right over here in the box, okay? So A, B, C. All right, now obviously C is 90 degrees. We don't have to write that down. That's just a given on each time. And on this one, they tell us that B is five and that angle B is 38 degrees. All right, let's start with the easiest piece. The easiest piece to find here would be uh, measure of angle A. That's because we can just do 90 minus 38 degrees, and this is 52 degrees. You did this in geometry. Okay, so that's the first part. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and box that. Now the next part is actually finding the two missing sides. Pythagorean theorem, will help us at some point, but we need at least two sides to find, to use Pythagorean theorem on the third side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label side A, and I'm gonna think about what is the trig function that has the ratio for five and A. You know, looking at 38 degrees. Opposite of 38 degrees is five, adjacent to 38 degrees is A. That's tangent, okay? So tangent, of 38 degrees should be equal to 5 over A. Now we haven't seen problems that look like this exactly, but this ratio or this equation should make sense. Now all I have to do is solve for A. All right, I'm gonna switch colors for this. Okay, let's use cross multiplication. You've been doing this for several years now. Okay, so I would have A tangent of 38 equaling to 5 five, and so <coughs> if I divide both sides by tangent of 38, that should give me my A. So five divided by tangent of 38. And if you type this into the calculator, make sure you're in degrees mode, since 38 is in degrees, and we would get A to be 6.400, okay? All right, now, Talking about C, we can either use trig to find the hypotenuse using either sine or cosine, or we could do Pythagorean theorem. You could take your pick. Probably by now, you guys are really good with the trig, but Pythagorean theorem is something you've been doing for so long, that might not be a bad idea. So we could do five squared plus 6.4 squared equals C squared. Now one thing I wanna hold you to here is to not actually type 6.4, but to use the answer function. That way you do not lose accuracy, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and write the answer here. If you're using your calculator, this should be pretty easy. You type it in, you take the square root, okay? And you get C equals 8.121. Any questions that you have on this part, I really want to encourage you to write them down and ask me at the beginning of the class the next time I see you. All right, let's look at example two. Let's go ahead and draw a triangle. And let's label it. And this is just a reference. We're not given either of the acute angles here but I am given two of the sides. So A, which is four, and the hypotenuse C, which is 15. All right, probably the easiest thing for you guys to do would be to find B first, which would use Pythagorean theorem. So four squared plus B squared equals 15 squared. Okay, you would take do the subtraction, you would take square root, and you would get 14 point, oops, point 0.457 rounded to the nearest thousandth. Okay, I'm not spending that much time on Pythagorean theorem. 
because like I said, you've been doing that for years. If you have questions though, please ask during class or come in for tutoring. All right, let's now find either of the angles. It doesn't really matter which one we start with. I'm going to go ahead and start with A. Now, when I'm looking at A and I'm looking at 4 and 15, and I could be using 14.457 over here, but that's kind of messy. So I'm just going to look at 4 and 15. Fr according to A, 4 would be the opposite, 15 would be the hypotenuse. Which trig ratio is this? Sine. So that means that sine of A is equal to 4 over 15. All right, now thinking back to the last video lesson, 1.6, we then know that A is arc sine of 4 fifteenths. So typing this into your calculator, again in radians mode, you do get not something exact, but it tells you to round to the nearest um, whole number or the nearest degree. So we find that measure of angle A is 15 degrees. All right, then measure of angle B should be pretty easy to find because we know that these two acute angles should add up to 90. So measure of angle B then would be 75 degrees rounded to the nearest hole. Okay, so if you find, normally there's one piece of information that's pretty easy to find in the other pieces of information. You might have to do a little bit of work for, but not a lot. Okay, last example. Redrawing our triangle. Let's label the hypotenuse 23.6. Let's measure the angle 24. I'm just going to draw a little arrow. We have A, C, and B. And again, finding the other angle, pretty easy. All you have to do is subtract from 90, and that would be 66 degrees. And need to do a little bit more work on the other parts. And so, since I'm given the hypotenuse, I'm given angle A, doesn't matter which side I want to start with. <coughs> Let's go ahead and find side A next. So this would be opposite of 24 degrees, if I so choose to do 24 degrees. I could have chosen 66. You have a lot of options here. But if I choose angle A, I have an opposite, and I have a hypotenuse. And so let's write out our equation. Sine of A, which is 24 degrees, is equal to the opposite, which is A, little a, um, over the hypotenuse, which is 23.6. Again, if you put this over 1, that might help see it. And this is nice when you get A times 1, because that means you have to do an, another step. When you type this in, I really want to encourage you to type the number first. Um, and the only reason for that is a lot of students, when they're typing in sine of 24, remember your calculator opens the parentheses, and if you forget to close them and put a times some other number here, that will change, um, it'll make your answer inaccurate. It'll change what you're really trying to type in. So be careful about that. Okay, round to the nearest thousandth after you've typed this in, 9.599. All right, now to find B, take your pick. Pythagorean theorem, another trig, you will get, go ahead and try this on your own, pause if you need to, you probably would, 21.56. And really, 5, 6 is 0. Okay, let's look at the next page. Here are some word problems. I'm going to go back to blue. It's saying draw a diagram and solve. Sometimes I'm going to give you a diagram, although those typically are the harder problems. On these, I'm not going to give you a picture, but it should be something that's reasonably easy to draw. I tell you to round the side measures to two decimals. I want you to change this. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't change that. Go ahead and leave it. Sometimes I will tell you just two decimals, and that's fine. Angle measures to the nearest degree. <coughs> Go ahead and follow the directions. If I don't tell you with the side, you want to default to 3. But if I tell you two decimals, let's just go ahead and follow that. It says, according to the safety sticker on a 20-foot ladder, the distance from the bottom of the ladder to the base on the wall, a base of the wall on which it leans should be one-fourth the length of the ladder 
and that um, one fourth length is five feet. Okay, and that makes sense. One fourth of twenty is five. So before I do anything, I want to draw a picture. And guess what? It's going to be a right triangle. I know that. The ladder is what's leaning. So let's, it's the hypotenuse in this case. And anytime you have a leaning ladder problem, the ladder is going to be the hypotenuse. And you've seen this example actually in geometry a lot, both with the Sokotoa unit and with just plain Pythagorean theorem problems. Um, this is the 5 right here. I know this is because it's talking about the base of the wall, all right? That has to be 5 feet. And this is to provide stability for the ladder. If the ladder is too close to the wall, it could fall backwards. And that's kind of the premise of this problem. All right, so these are the two things we know. Remember that besides the right angle, you're going to be given two pieces of information. It could be two sides. It could be an angle and a side. It won't be just two angles, so you'll definitely know at least one side. So it says, if the ladder in, is in this position, what angle does it make with the ground? Okay, so this is answering part A. Let's put a theta right here. And the 5 is adjacent to that theta. The 20 is obviously the hypotenuse. So you got to think, well, which trig for part A, which trig function do we need to use? Adjacent and hypotenuse, that's cosine. So cosine of theta should equal 5 over 20, which simplifies to 1 fourth. So if this whole lean should be 1 fourth, blah, 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 then it didn't even really matter what the specific numbers are. Um, the angle will always be the same, and that's because they're going to be similar triangles. All right, let's find theta now. We're going to find theta by doing arc cosine of 5 twentieths, or you could have gone ahead and changed that to 1 fourth, same thing. And it's saying to use the nearest degree, so that would be 76 degrees, after you plug that in your calculator. Okay, part B is saying how high up the wall will the ladder reach? Okay, so let's put an X there. That's talking about the vertical length of the ladder. Now. Pythagorean theorem, I think, is probably the easiest way to do this. We could, now that we know the angle, do sine of x over 20. I'm going to go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem, though. But you have options, and I don't want you to think that there's just one way to do these problems. Okay? If you do Pythagorean theorem and you solve x, I'm not going to show all the steps to that, because you're getting to use a calculator on this get 19.36 feet. If you are having problems with Pythagorean Theorem, please, please come to tutoring. Okay, that's not going away. Oh, well, let me, uh, I did skip one little thing. It did say show two ways to work this, so I kind of already told you, but now let's actually write it out. Okay, we know that theta is 76. Now, when you, I'm going to write 76, Okay, but when you actually type it in your calculator, you don't want to type in 76. You want to type in the answer. So, I mean, you need to make sure that your answer, or you can go up and actually type in arc cosine of 5 twentieths instead, but you want to make sure you're not rounding in the middle of the problem. All right, so what should sine of 76 be equal to? Opposite over hypotenuse x over 20. And again, put this over 1, cross multiply, and when you multiply here, you need to make sure you put parentheses around that 76, or really it would be second answer before you multiply by 20, or you need to write the 20 first. Okay, and you will get 19. 0.36. You're going to get the same answer. <coughs> okay, let's move on to the next problem. Angles of elevation and depression. This is something you learn in geometry as well, so let's just recap. An angle of elevation or depression is always formed by the line of sight and a horizontal line. Okay, horizontal line. 
It says it will never be formed with a vertical line. So what I want you to do is to, with some kind of color, or you could use a pencil, but I think it will stand out to you more if you use a highlighter or a pen of some color. I want you to really show what the angle of depression and elevation are. Notice that they're made with the horizontal line of sight. So maybe you're up here, and you're looking straight. You're like up on the top of a building, and you're looking straight, and then you say you want to look down at something on the ground. That's your angle of depression. Let's say you're on the ground, and you're looking straight ahead, and then you see something up in the sky. Maybe it's this person at the top of the building, and you're waving to them, and that's your angle of elevation. Okay, notice that these two angles, they have something in common. Okay. <coughs> it says, what is significant about these two angles? Well, there's a lot of things you could probably put here, but the most important thing is that they're congruent. They're not the exact same thing, but in the same problem, the angle of depression and angle of elevation will be the same thing. Um, thinking back to geometry, we've got two parallel lines. You've got your horizontal sight up here, you've got your horizontal line of sight down here, and we've got a transversal. Here's a key word that hopefully will jog your memory. We've got a transversal that goes right through the middle. What are these two angles called? And there's a theorem about this. Okay, they're on alternate sides of the transversal. Let me um. Here's your transversal in blue. We've got our two angles on alternate sides of the transversal, but they're on the interior parts of my two horizontal lines of sight. Okay? These are alternate interior angles. That's why they're congruent. There are other ways to prove this. I'm not going to get too much into that in this lesson. Okay, Your lines of sight will always be parallel. Your transversal is the line of sight you get when you either look up or look down. <coughs> so the good thing about this is, let's say they're asking you for the angle of depression in a problem. If the angle of elevation is easier to find, find that, because it's going to be the same thing. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples, and then we'll be done. Okay, you're going to have a problem here, and uh, I'm just going to say, let's always start with drawing a right triangle. So we know it has to be that way. Our next lesson, the pictures are going to be a little bit more complicated, but we'll work our way up to that. So this is a flagpole, so flagpole is going to be the vertical. It casts a 60-foot shadow. All right, so we know the shadow's on the ground, so let's go ahead and label that 60. When the angle of elevation of the sun, <coughs> excuse me, it's 35 degrees. Okay, so we know that regardless of whether we're talking about elevation or depression, the angle of elevation has to be made with the horizontal. So look at your triangle, find the horizontal leg, and let's put in 35 degrees at that angle and it's asking for the height of the flagpole. Let's put an X there. All right, at this point, we need to assess the information that we know. We know this angle. We know the adjacent, which is 60, and we know the opposite, which is X, or we're trying to find the opposite, O and A. That means we're going to use tangent. Tangent of 35 degrees is going to be equal to the ratio X over 60, and again, if you want to put this over 1, that might help. 1 times x is x. And when you multiply here, you either need to put 60 first, or you need to close parentheses around the 35. Either way, make sure that <coughs> you're doing that calculation correctly. And you get 42.012. It doesn't say how to round, so we're going to round to three decimal places. And we're going to put our units. We can't forget about that in the midst of this trig. We've got to have units on problems like this. Okay, last problem. A guy wire needs to be used to stabilize a radio antenna. So 
Again, you may not know exactly what this picture should look like, but hopefully you know it's a right triangle. Now the antenna okay, has to be the vertical. That means the guy wire is the hypotenuse. Okay, so the antenna is 20 meters tall, so let's go ahead and label that. And the angle of depression from the top of the antenna to the point where the wire will connect to the ground is 23 degrees. Now actually what they're talking about here is this angle. All right, not though the acute angle on the inside of the triangle at the top. All right, but this is what I mean. This 23 degrees up here doesn't help us in the triangle. We know though by alternate interior angles and the fact that angle of depression and elevation are congruent, we can label this angle 23 degrees down here. Okay, how long should the wire be? All right, so let's put X at the hypotenuse. Again, assess what you're given. Okay, we're given 23 degrees. 20 over here is opposite, and X is the hypotenuse. O and H, that's sine. So sine of 23 degrees equals 20 over X. Again, put this over 1. Now, again, in these cases, this is like the first one we worked. You got to do a little bit of work here. You got to do a division. So this, our answer is going to be 20 divided by sine of 23. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 51.19 meters. Always make sure you put your units. Okay, next lesson, we're going to step it up a little bit. So please ask me questions if there's anything you don't understand about these problems.